It's pitch black. Nothing but darkness. No sound. No light. Just a ringing in my ears. Why can't I see anything? Have I gone blind? No. No, thank God. I can see some light shining through a crack ahead of me. What happened? The last thing I remember is... Is everything crashing down around me? A building. Yes, that's it. Magneto dropped a building on us. Jean. No. I can't feel anything. Did he paralyze me? Why am I even still alive? Scott! Wait, I can hear again. Someone's calling me. Scott! Scott! Oh, thank God, you had me worried. What happened? Where are we? Under that apartment building we were stood next to. At the last minute I was able to use my telekinesis to make a bubble around us. Can you get us out? I don't have the strength. I don't even think I could do it if I was at 100%. But you could try. But if it's too thick, then... Then we'd be buried even more than we are. Right. Ugh. Don't try to move. You hit your head bad, and your leg... I think it may be broken. Great. You think they're still out there? Doubt it. Magneto probably thinks he finished us off. I thought Xavier and he used to be friends. All that talk of freeing mutants, and then he goes and does this? The others... Do you think? I hope not. We have to get out of here. We have to get you to a hospital. Jean, you really think these people are going to treat a mutant after what the Brotherhood's done? Did you bring your clothes? In the jet, I mean? Why would I? I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with some ideas, okay? Okay. Yeah, fine. But we have to get out of here first. Uh, just stay down, Scott. You'll hurt yourself more. Uh, I'm fine. If I blast us out, can you catch the debris? I'll try. Scott! <gasps> Jean! Damn it! I told you I wouldn't get used to that. <sighs> Thank God. When I saw what happened and then lost contact, I... I feared the worst. We're alive. Barely. Indeed. Scott, you have to try to use your optic blast to tunnel out. I was about to, Professor. Wait a minute, Professor. Are you picking up Warren? Or one of the others? No, I'm afraid not. They have all lost consciousness. But I thought I had Hank for a moment, but then he was gone again. Oh no. We can't think like that now, Jean. You must get out and return to the Blackbird. We're not leaving them, Professor. Scott, be reasonable. You're injured. Then we'll go to a local hospital. By the time we fly home and back, who knows what could have happened to the others. All right. But we must move quickly. You ready? No, but that's not gonna change. Go for it. Okay. Three, two, one. Gee, the debris! I have it! <sighs> yes! We did it! Holy! We did? Yes! Gee. Help Scott to the city hospital. I will continue to try and locate the others. Okay. Come on, Slim. Please don't call me that.
By the time a hospital is located, several hours have passed. Not surprisingly, there is not one manning the front desk. When a nurse finally appears, her response is predictable, but no less devastating. No, get out and leave us alone. What? Those costumes, that thing on his head, your one of them. But he hit his head. He could have a concussion. Only three doctors even turned up for work today. And all of them are busy with patients who you people hurt. Please. Next. I could ruin this place. I could use everything I have left to make them run for their lives or bow down before me. But no. That is Magneto's way. Not mine. And what would it even accomplish anyway? Any doctor forced to do his job would be unreliable at best, and a death sentence to Scott at worst. All we can do is leave before we are thrown out. Come on, Scott. What? But... No one will help us here. I don't know how much further I can carry him. I need to rest. My legs are like jelly. My God. The way everyone is looking at us. It's obvious that we don't belong. Outsiders as well as mutants. I'm so tired. I can't go any further. I need to sit down a moment. Take a break. Saving us took everything I had. I'm hurt. I'm exhausted. Haven't slept since I was in Hawaii over 30 hours ago. Haven't eaten since before that. I'll just put Scott up against this wall. Let's rest here for a moment. I'm beat. We should have just slept under the rubble. It wasn't safe. Yeah, safe. Look at us, Scott. We can't even walk. How the hell are we going to fight Magneto and the Brotherhood? We have to. Do you think he killed them? No. No, they're alive. Remember what Juggernaut said. If Xavier's right and Magneto did free him, then he wants at least some of us alive to join him. Maybe we should have said yes. You don't mean that. Don't I? You could be dying and those humans won't even lift a finger to help us. Besides, I don't have any loyalty to Xavier anymore. Look, Jean, what he did to you sucked big time. Yeah? But I don't know. After all this, maybe... Maybe we should hear him out. See what his reasons were. What? Scott, if you want to live with a guy who does that to people, then you go ahead. Me? After this, I'm going home. If there is any after this. You two need a doctor? Yeah? Follow me. Introducing himself as a doctor, the newcomer helps two young mutants pick themselves up and lead them to a nearby building. The door is locked. But... Using a key, he enters and turns on the light to reveal a private surgery. The teens are skeptical, but having no option, submit to his care. Jean is left at the empty reception area, assuring the doctor that she is fine, and the doctor and two nurses whisk Scott away into surgery. Jean is left alone, and as the hours pass, she lets her body give in, and she falls into sleep laid out across the waiting room chairs. Um, miss? Miss? Hmm? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I just... I just dozed off. Your friend is resting now. Is he okay? A mild concussion, a broken fibia, nothing serious. Oh, thank God. I was worried. Thank you. Even if it wasn't serious, we had nowhere else to go. I had no patience right now. Anyone with serious injuries has gone to the hospital. Anyone healthy is cowering at home. But not you. You knew we were mutants and yet you helped us. Well, the last time I checked, you were still people. It's pretty simple. I went to the hospital to see if they needed help, and I saw patients who needed it. Thank you. It's the Hippocratic Oath. Besides, you're not the ones that did this to us. How do you know that? I saw those evil mutants on TV. You were not with them. We could have come here to join him. You could have. But those injuries are fresh, and in those costumes, I doubt you got them playing sports. You're very wise. Very wise and kind. Thank you again. You keep saying that. What's your name? Enyim. Dr. Nilsson Enyim. 
Nice to meet you. I'm... Marvel Girl. I see. Well, Marvel Girl, let me take a look at you. I'm fine. I'll be the judge of that. Come on. All right. Does your boyfriend have a name? He's not my boyfriend. But he has a name. Uh, Cyclops. Ah, quite apt. At the metal fortress that overlooks Hammer City, Magneto hovers just above the balcony, looking down at the city below, a puzzled and pondering look upon his face. Master? Master, what are you doing? Searching, Toad. For what? I have a feeling, a feeling that our young friends may have survived our encounter. No chance. No one could survive that. Still, I should have been more thorough. You are new to our number, Toad. You have not realized yet that these X-Men are increasingly difficult to kill. If I may ask, sir, why did you kill those ones? I thought they were the most powerful. Arguably, yes. But I often find that the most powerful are often the hardest to control. Speaking of which, where is Wanda? She is supposed to be taking over watch duty. I'll go get her. No. I'll do it. Stay here and watch the city. Try not to let it fall apart in the ten minutes I leave it with you. You can count on me, Magneto. Moments earlier, down in the lower corridors of the building, a quite dashing young man approaches the Scarlet Witch with a cocky swagger. Hello there, beautiful. Oh, get away from me, Wingard. You only wish you actually looked that handsome. Ah, but I am. I can be anyone you want. To you. Only as an illusion. But behind it all, I will always know that you look like an old troll. How about this? Something more refined? A gentleman. Jason, you can make me think you look like anyone you want. But only in your demented mind would I ever fall for you. You'd have to brainwash me first. Is that a challenge? Mastermind! I I'm sorry, I was just... Wanda, you are late for watch duty. I was going... Give me time. I will crack that nut. Magneto's eyes narrow, and with a wave of his hand, the Master of Magnetism tosses Jason Wingard across the room in a fit of rage, slamming the illusionist up against the wall. You will stay away from her, understand? But sir, I was just doing... Why'd you care? If you want her for yourself, then... Silence, fool. You will not be alone with her again. You will not speak to her or anyone about her in that manner again, or I will kill you. Do you understand, Wingard? Do I make myself clear? Yes! Yes, of course! Good. Now get out of my sight. With a panicked start, Mastermind removes himself as far away from his leader as possible. Magneto, sneering, forms a doorway in a metal wall leading to his chambers. As he closes it behind him, from the shadows of the corridor, Quicksilver, having witnessed this exchange, finds himself somewhat confused. What the...? In the bowels of the building, Bobby Drake phases back into the conscious world, realizing at once that he is in a prison. With a start, he rises from the bunk and comes face to face with a friend, or two. One? Hank? Where are we? What happened to Scott and Jean? Bobby, calm down. We were captured. What? We're in Magneto's castle, or whatever this is. He obviously wants us as converts to his cause. What about Scott and Jean? The last time I saw them, they were buried under a building. What? No, they have to be... Woman, they have to be alright. Try contacting them with the link the professor set up! We can't contact anyone. Can't even reach the professor. Believe me, we've tried. A reasonable hypothesis is that this prison is made out of a similar material to Magneto's helmet. Right then. I'll break up out of this joint! <sighs> I tried that too. I pounded on the walls for hours. And they didn't even budge. 
not in the slightest. And don't forget, without some form of liquid, you would pass out from dehydration long before you did any damage. If you managed to do anything at all. So what? We just sit here? What else can we do, kid? Don't call me kid, bird boy! You're only two years older than me, Warren! Come on! He killed Scott! He killed Gene! Believe me, I know! I watched it happen! I... I couldn't even stand, let alone fly. I watched as they... as she died. I should have tried harder. I could have done more! We've been over this, Warren. There's nothing either of us could have done. Oh, God. Warren, I... We're just kids! A year ago, I was worried about my calculus exam, and now... The professor did this to us. He took away our lives and made us into this army or whatever we are to him. He is responsible for their deaths as much as Magneto is. We all know that's not true, Warren. <sighs> Look, I'm not the biggest Xavier fan these days either. But we chose this. We insisted. Even after Moira and he tried to stop us, we insisted. We trained. And we came back. And now they're dead! And we are at that psycho's mercy. Promise me something, fellas. Mm hmm? No matter what they say, no matter what they do, we don't turn. We don't give in. Remember what he did to Scott and Jean. Agreed. Damn right. As the next day dawns, across town, Jean has risen from a restless sleep and has begun to communicate with Xavier to make their plan of attack. The doctor gave Scott a leg brace. It will at least let him walk. Hopefully that will be enough. Scott, you okay? I'm walking. Should at least be able to get there now. Then it's just point and shoot with these eyes of mine, right? Right. You've got to be joking. You're not actually going back out there to fight them. They have our friends, Dr. Anion. We have to. I would like to meet this Xavier fellow and give him a piece of my mind about this. I hope you get the chance, Doctor. Scott, will you be able to fight? You bet your ass I will. We need to be careful about this. I am not picking up any of the Brotherhood or X-Men with Cerebro. Magneto must have lined the walls of his fortress with the same material as his helmet. I won't be able to shut down Eric unless you get him outside. And get his helmet off. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Unless... Go on. Unless you unlock my telepathy and teach me how. Oh, hell no. Scott, I, I want to do this. We have to save the others, not to mention this whole frickin' country. Alright. I'm not sure if I can undo the mental blocks entirely at this distance. But I will do what I can. But I must warn you that without training... It will be... overwhelming. Whatever it takes. As the day moves from morning to noon to dusk, Jean spends the entirety of the daylight hours with only her thoughts and Xavier's. Scott can only work on strengthening his leg, if only to pace on it as he waits. When he finally hears something from her, it is not a pleasant experience. Oh, the voices! I can't! Make them stop! You must control them, G. Only you can quieten them. I can put up temporary blocks in your mind, but only you can maintain them. I don't know how! Just do as I do. Follow my path. Jean! Jean, what's wrong? She's losing it. What if Xavier is right? What if she goes mad? I couldn't bear it if she... You're thinking too loud, Scott! Get out! Oh. Suddenly, Scott is thrown back out of the room, the door slamming shut before him. Control, Jean. You must take control. This is what you warned me about, isn't it? This is why you blocked this power in the first place. Scott is right. I'm gonna go mad. No, you're not. Listen to my voice, Jean. See my face in your mind. Focus in on my voice only. Let the rest of them fall into the background. Take each of them and shut them behind a door that only you can open. Yes. Yes, that's it. Good, Jean. Hours later, nightfall, as Jean now emerges from her solitude, Scott and Anaim look up to greet her. Okay. 
I'm as ready as I will ever be. You all right? As good as I'll be for now. Good. We need to... Scott is cut off as, with a crash, the entire front wall of the surgery, their safe haven, is torn away. Behind it now stands the Scarlet Witch, Quicksilver, and Mastermind. Knock, knock! What? How did you... You do realize you left over 30 witnesses when you left the hospital. Note to self. Trust Magneto's hunches. Scott reaches for his visor at once, but he doesn't get a chance to fire. With a flash of light and a sudden pain, once again, everything goes dark. When his eyes open... He realizes that he is tied upright to a metal slab, with restraints on his hands and feet. Scott tries to move his hands, struggling against his bonds, then falls back in despair. As he does, he hears a conversation. He said the killing was over, Pietro. It is. Then why are they here, Pietro? I... I do not know. Yes, you do. At this point... Scott again passes into unconsciousness, unable to hear another word. When he wakes again, this time, he comes around fully, looking up to see his four friends around and opposite him, the X-Men encircling the room on slabs, just like his. What? Scott, you're awake! I have never been so happy to see you. Oh, thank God you're both okay. I must say, I'm impressed. You must be quite talented at using your gifts to survive that experience, and by doing so you have proven to me that you are worthy to join your brethren at my side. Like hell. Anyam! What happened to Anyam? The doctor that helped you. I made the rules quite clear to the citizens of this island when I took over. By aiding you, he broke those rules, and he has suffered the consequences. You killed him. You killed him, didn't you? I made the rules very clear. No! No! All he did was help us! Why? You evil! Now that you are all reunited, it's time for you to decide. Decide what? To join me, or pay the price as your human friend did. Then you'd better get it over with and kill us. <laughs> then it is a good thing I was prepared for your... stubbornness. So it will not be your life you will have on the line. Scott looks over with a start as part of the wall tears away, forming into a spike and rushing towards Jean. It stops just short of her neck hovering there with the tip of the spike now pressing to her throat. Jean, no! Decide, boy. Join my brotherhood or the girl dies. I... It's okay. Don't give in. You have ten seconds to decide. Scott, don't do it! Ten. Nine. Say yes! Eight. Scott, now! For God's Seven. sake, just say yes! Stop it, Magneto, please! Six. Anything! I, uh, Scott, really, it's okay. Don't give him what he wants. Five. I, four. I, Magneto. All right. My hands are tied. Can't reach my visor. Okay, look. Three. I, okay. Louder. I didn't hear you clearly. Two. Okay. I forgot something earlier. And what's that? I upgraded. Scott then clenches his fist, and his visor opens. Uh. Surprised, Magneto is thrown across the room by the force of the optic blast. Scott turns to Hank and blasts him free, doing the same to Bobby and Warren, who then in turn free Jean as Scott extricates himself. You forgot. The hand release is new, all right? In a rage, Magneto rises to hover over them, throwing the tables aside, turning them and the very walls around them into his weapons. Young fools, you are in my house, and here I am God. Brotherhood, attack! No more games, no more prisoners, they shall die. From all sides come the Brotherhood, and in seconds the room is turned into a war zone. 
each youth finding a target or two and squaring off. As the X-Men actually start to get the upper hand, Magneto strikes. Retins. My weapons are the wall, the floor, this entire building. A large metal plate knocks Warham from the sky, sending him toward Toad, who leaps onto him, driving him to the ground and hammering away. No one defies Magneto! Meanwhile, Bobby is holding his own, ice blasting with all he has left, keeping members of the evil mutants at bay, until the floor gives way under him. He cries out as he falls, only just able to use his powers to make an ice slide, catching himself and returning to ground level. Beast is not faring well against Quicksilver, unable to land a punch as the silver-haired mutant speeds around him, hitting him over and over again as he passes by. Do you yield? <laughs> is, is that all you got? As Hank continues to defiantly fight, the two women on the battlefield have found each other. You really think you can stand up to me, little girl? Take a shot and find out. The Scarlet Witch sends a hex bolt towards the other girl, but at the last moment Jean raises a telekinetic shield to block it. Then, with all her might, she sends a telekinetic blast at Wanda, knocking her back. She seems to be gaining the upper hand, when suddenly she is being wrapped in metal. Thick iron now wrapping her up like baking foil. But with Magneto concentrating on Jean, he does not notice as Angel takes to the air again. Shaking off the cobwebs and glaring at Magneto, the boy comes up behind him and down, grabbing Magneto's helmet and pulling it off. I'll take that. We still need to get him outside. Dropping Jean, Magneto reaches out with all he has and magnetically grabs back his helmet, pulling it towards him and with it, Warren. In the midst of blasting Toad, Cyclops looks over and calls to the other boy. Angel, let go! Ah, ah. As soon as Angel is clear, Cyclops lets loose, blasting the helmet out of the air with all the power in his blast. And away from Magneto, the helmet drops to the floor with a clang. But before he can take advantage of the situation, Quicksilver sprints in, knocking Scott down with a speedy punch to the face. He drops to his knees. I really am getting sick of that. So am I. As he goes in for another pass, Pietro is suddenly stopped right in his path, his feet slowing to a stop, and then kicking as he is lifted into the air and held there. All your Cyclops. With pleasure. Gene then turns towards Magneto. Time to finish this. We need to get him outside before we can do that, Genie. Nope. The professor isn't the only telepath with us anymore. Oh. Then it's a pity you missed your chance. No. Two abilities. You truly are a powerful girl. A shame you had to choose death. But I'm tired of this. It's time we end it. The teens, even the Brotherhood, now look on in a mixture of awe and panic as the walls themselves lift up and close in, rushing towards them, flying, knocking each of the X-Men down one by one. How fitting. I will bury you in that which stops your handler from controlling me as he does you. Brotherhood, get out now. This place will not exist when this is done. That's right. You've killed so many, what difference will a few more make? I do what I have to. Really? So you have to kill us? I gave you a choice. Between serving you and dying? You know, for a person who crows on about the evils of mankind, you sure as hell act just like the worst of them. Scott, what are you doing? Saving our lives. Hopefully. You know nothing. What I have done is nothing compared to the millions of their own kind the humans have slaughtered. Yeah? And how many will it take before you're just as evil as them? Insolent child. 
A massive part of the floor now rushes up into Scott, and before he can react, he is pinned up meters away against the far wall. <laughs> Scott! Do not talk to me about evil. Everyone I have ever loved has been killed. My family in a death camp. My child allowed to burn before my eyes simply because I was a mutant. It would take a million of them. I would bathe in a lake of human blood. And then, then, we would be even. Scott grimaces and strains as the metal covers his nose and mouth, spikes rushing up towards his skull. If that is what you call evil, then so be it. You're right. What? You are evil, Magneto. And I will be party to it no longer. What the? No! Magneto does not have time to shift his focus before his helmet glows, warps, and is lifted from his head. No! Jean then lets loose from her mind a massive psychic blast and into the silver-haired head of Magneto. She tries to do as Xavier taught her, but she is inexperienced. Her power is so great, and she is too new to it. Pandora's box has now been opened, and Jean finds herself unable to close it again. The raw power crushing the mind of the man once known as Eric Lencher. And under that raw, powerful strain, his mind breaks. <gasps> Everyone in the room jumps for cover as the levitated parts of the metal construct now fall and crash around them. Scott looks up as ahead of him, Magneto's helmet falls and lays still. He then looks over to the lifeless Magneto himself. The prop psychic blasts were never like that. Gene, what did you do? Mister, no! Scott looks over at Jean as she buries her head into her hands dropping to her knees and bursting into tears. Oh my god. Scott stands and rushes over to her, dropping to embrace her, an embrace which she returns, clinging to him for comfort. I told him. I told him I wasn't ready. Scott, I couldn't control it. It's okay, Jean. I'm here. He pulls her into his chest, looking around at the others. His eyes thankfully covered, but the others betray their thoughts. He's alive! What? Yes, but I sense no brain activity. He is either brain dead or in a deep coma. Professor? But how? Hank follows Bobby's pointing arm to the holes in the walls and ceiling. I am sorry, Jean. I should have known what would happen. I guess I did. We had no other choice. You murdering whore! If he doesn't wake up, I will- You will do nothing, Wingard. You will sleep until the authorities arrive for you. With a start, Mastermind's head is knocked back by an invisible force, and his body drops to the floor. You owe my sister your lives. Remember that. Come on, Wanda. Do not be too hasty to leave him, Pietro. Magneto needs care. Care that we all know no government will provide. Ah, uh, what do you care? Whoever you are. As the twins then turn to leave, a transparent Xavier now appears before them, standing, the X-Men looking with a start as they see him too. I care because he was once a dear friend, and because I cannot help but feel responsible for what has happened. Then take care of him yourself. I have too many eyes on my school for that. Please. Take him. He has help. He has Toad. I see your point, but why the hell should we care? We turned on him. If you remember, that betrayal is how your crazy girl got a chance at him. You should care. Because blood is thicker than water. And because children have a duty to care for their parents in times of need. Oh, oh, oh no. What? Look upon him, Pietro. Who else do you know that has had silver hair all of his adult life? No. No. Oh God, that means- Yes. Your mother gave you up to protect you. To protect you from him. But you, dear Wanda, and Pietro, are the twin children of Eric Lencia. 
you knew? Then he knew? Yes. No doubt that is why he sought you out so urgently to join his ranks. I... It, it, it doesn't change anything. I still want nothing to do with him. No, Pietro. He is evil. He is everything we feared he was when we joined him. But whatever else he is, he is also our father. Xavier, we will care for him. Should he ever wake up, we will deal with that later. All right, but only until he recovers. If he recovers. With those words, the twins gather up their father, taking him out of the room towards somewhere safe, well before the human armed forces arrive. Gone too are the X-Men, leaving only the unconscious Toad and Mastermind to face the music. Soon after, the Blackbird jet takes to the air. Hank sets a course for home. You now see why I did what I did. Yes. Perhaps. But no more lies, Professor. No more manipulation. Or I'm done. For good this time. Agreed. What will happen to Jean? She will heal. In time. I will work with her to control her telepathy so this never happens again. What about Magneto? Do you think he'll wake up? It could go either way. But if I had to bet on it, I would put all down that we haven't seen the last of him. Then maybe we should... you know, should have finished. No, Scott. To do so would make us no better than him. Magneto is a terrorist. And if he ever wakes up, he will pay for his crimes. Now, my X-Men. Get some rest. Next time. My brother, he's alive? Scott? I give you the immovable glory!